Hey everybody, welcome back to another part in my Creating a Great Tone series for our Line 6 Helix. And today I'm going to take a, kind of a culmination of the last three videos I did. Uh, anybody who follows me probably saw some videos I put out last week. I did two parts on gain staging and one part talking about the idea of unity gain and some myths surrounding that. Well, I wanted to take the things I talked about in those three videos and combine them together and show you how that, those ideas can be used practically to create a preset on your own from scratch. Not starting from one of my templates or anything, but just from scratch. If you haven't watched the previous three videos, uh, maybe take some time to go do so. I think there's some good information in there that can potentially help folks to understand how to put together a better preset. All right, so let's do this. Let's dive right over to HX Edit. <clears throat> and what you see here is we have this completely blank preset, right? I'm going to keep things relatively simple. Obviously, presets can get extremely complex or stay completely simple. I'm going to kind of go somewhere in between. Obviously, in a video like this, you can't exhaust all possibilities or give every conceivable combination. It would just be impossible. So I'm just going to use the top path um, for good reason, because I'm going to do a little test later on in the video. <clears throat> and I'm just on my multi out. I have my multi in coming in. And I'm going to start by doing something that I oftentimes do, uh, is adding a compressor to the end. I'm going to keep this a stereo path. So I'm going to put an LA Studio comp and kind of instinctively go to the settings that I normally go to. Okay, now here's the thing. In the, game, in the video about Unity Gain, I was talking about a myth out there that somehow the finished output level of a preset must be the same as the guitar input going into it. It's nonsense. It just doesn't make any sense. I've discussed it with a bunch of people online since then. Nobody's been able to give me a good reason why that has to be. And in fact, there's reasons why it shouldn't be. I've used the example in a video I did last week too about the power cab, you know? The uh, Line 6 power cab is expecting to see a certain input level. And by doing what some folks say and keeping everything uh, in a preset at the same level as the guitar dry guitar signal, you're never going to be able to get that type of input into the power cab. And if you use the input gain on that, it just gets noisier. So that's just one example. You know, even in recording, we want to have a decent amount of level going into a track when we're recording. So, you know, it's so, so that idea of unity gain with the instrument level, I don't agree with. But unity gain throughout your signal path. But here's the important point. If you have a block, such as say a compressor. It, when I put this compressor here, I intend to leave it on all the time. So there isn't really any super necessity to have that at unity gain with when it's disengaged because it's not going to be turned on and off anyways. So I'm gonna talk about that concept in a bit, but the reason that I add the compressor first is because the amount of level that we hit the compressor with is going to determine how it reacts. So it is going to be very sensitive to gain staging coming into it. Since it's my last block and is going to be staying on all the time in my presets, I will just leave it with these settings. So uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add an amp and a cab block. And, and let's use the Brit Plexi norm for that. Okay, so here we go. We see the, 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 the settings pop up like this. I, I always like to go into the greenback cab, pop on maybe a 121 ribbon mic or a 160 ribbon mic, pull it a few inches back. Okay, and with these settings, what you'll see is the channel volume is on 5.5. Now, with this preset, I'm just gonna set up two snapshots, one clean, one dirty, just to show you my approach to doing that and making sure levels are kind of balanced, okay? Now, having said that, the first thing I do, let, let's take this down, bring the master down a little bit so it cleans it up. Bring the drive down a little bit and see what we have here. And bring a little more treble and presence into that. Okay, now the volume level to me is fairly low. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna clean that up just a touch more, maybe down two and a half on the drive. Maybe just kind of edge a breakup. 
I'm going to take that, because this is my cleaner tone, I'm going to take that and I'm going to crank the channel volume. Okay, we've already determined in my previous videos, cranking the channel volume does not affect the tone adversely in any way, shape or form. But what it did here is it hit the front end of my compressor harder. So I'm going to go play and watch my gain reduction meters on my compressor. I'm getting about 2 dB of gain reduction, which is actually kind of not so bad, but let's even maybe go down, we'll bring the peak reduction down to five here and we'll try that again. Just a little bit less than uh, 2 dB on the gain reduction meter. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to actually start off, because your clean sound is going to have a, a lot bigger transient spike at the beginning, let's say. It's going to be a much more transient sound, meaning that there's gonna be a louder sort of pick attack at the beginning versus say a, 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 an overdrive tone, which is kind of naturally compressed as we'll see in a minute. I wanna start there on 10, because when I start adding gain and drive to the amp and maybe bringing the master back up, the volume's gonna come up as well. So I'm gonna use the channel volume to match that up, okay? So let's just say that, I'm not trying to dial in the best sound here, but let's just say this is my starting point. I now have a healthier signal coming out. Now what I was saying before about unity gain with the compressor, let's turn it off and listen to the sound. You can hear with that on now that there's a little volume jump. That is not a unity gain, and a lot of folks would say, well, it needs to be. And that's fine. If your intention is to turn this on and off in the use of your preset, then yes, I would do so. And I would come in its on state here and maybe, I don't know, back it off a couple dB. We'll see what that does with the level control, not the gain control, because that's going to affect the nonlinear distortion. We're much closer there. A lot of times I skip that step because like I said, the compressor is left on for me. It's the last thing in my chain. It's not affecting anything after it. So let's do the even at that though. We have that working at unity gain. So we've leveled that to the sound of, or the volume level of the amp we've decided on. Now keep in mind that by cranking the volume up, the channel volume up on the amp to 10, as I mentioned in my gain staging video, whatever we put after this, I'm gonna put a delay and a reverb depending on the delay or reverb we put in there, hitting it with more level into the front end or more input gain could possibly affect the nonlinear characteristics of that particular processor. Meaning something like the transistor tape, the harder we hit the front end, the more distortion we're gonna get, but not necessarily bad distortion. It could actually be something you want. That's going to be us up to us to decide. If I put a block in here and find, you know, I'm hitting it a little too hard, then you are gonna have to come back here and maybe adjust this. I can't tell you what level to set this at until a particular situation arises where we have to say, oh, that's having an adverse effect now, okay? Uh, or it's having the effect that I want, in which case it's fine. If it's having an effect you don't want, dial it back. I use the example of the vintage digital where you can very quickly get into this you know, digital distortion within that block because it's, it's modeling the behaviors of a digital delay at an 8-bit setting possibly with very little headroom, right? But we have the headroom control to deal with that. So lots of possibilities, but I can only say that I start off at 10 simply because this is going to be my loudest, most transient sound that could cause me problems with clipping or peaking. And I move down from there. So I don't need any more headroom above this, so I set that on 10. If that causes me problems later as I add blocks, I deal with it at the time, right? But for now, this is my starting point. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to set up, this is snapshot one, I'm going to snapshot enable my drive, my channel volume, and my master. Now we'll switch over to snapshot two. I'm going to crank my master, and I'm gonna bring my drive, I don't know, somewhere up around eight, and let's see what that does for us. <laughs> Now, what's interesting about that is if I go back to snapshot one, we hear that now snapshot two is a lot louder. If I was playing my clean sound,
our clean sound may not cut through now because our overdrive sound is overpowering it. So in snapshot two, I'm gonna start rolling back the channel volume to an appropriate level to kind of get a match between those two settings. I'm gonna go back a little bit more and we'll deal with the final overall output volume later. Now that was too much. And I'm just going by ear and feel here. Whatever, you know, this is gonna be up to you to decide how much or how little difference you want between those for your purpose. I'm kinda of happy there. We'll just leave it at that. So now we see that on snapshot one, I have two and a half on drive, 10 on channel volume, master on seven. I switch that over, my master goes up to 10, my drive goes up to eight, and to compensate for the volume boost, my channel volume comes down to six and a half. Now let's go check out the amount of gain reduction we're getting on our compressor now. I'm still getting just slightly under two dB of gain reduction. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna leave that alone. So I now have to, now one word about this. If I go very dramatic on this, let's remember the setting of six and a half, but let's say I come over here and bring this down to four. And now we start switching between our clean and our overdrive. Now that's obviously a, a, a very useless example in some cases because we'll never be that off. But do you hear this little kind of surge? Maybe I'll just try to come up a little bit more in volume here. Do you hear that kind of surge of volume when we go back to our clean? Well, that's partially because we're so mismatched on the volumes. But here's the problem. Let's say I really wanted to clean this up. Uh, and, and on my clean, I bring this back even further, right? You hear that? The reason for this is, first of all, kind of bad gain staging in a sense. Uh, I don't know if it's really gain staging because it's internal into one, one particular block, but these dramatic moves in volume. In talking to my friend Eric Klein at line six, he told me a while back that you know, the snapshot mode on the Helix, these different parameters that are switching at the same time, we think they're switching at the same time, but actually in the processing of the Helix, they're happen happening in rapid succession. So you have a big boost here and then a, a quick cut somewhere else. It could get you that problem where you get this little burst and I've heard people talking about it. I've done presets where it's, it's kind of an interesting thing. It's, it's, I have what I want, but that's existent. And it's not existent in all presets. It just depends on the settings. And I kind of make a, a decision that I, I have the tone I want, but there is a little hiccup when you make the switch. Now, one thing about that, I think we were uh, set here at two and a half um, and uh, six, uh, where'd we go here? I believe it was six and a half. So, you know, something like this, where I'm pretty happy with the tones. <laughs> You get a little subtle bit of that kind of jump in the sound. But you know, if we're playing live uh, where we're gonna be switching like this, if we kind of time those switches on the hits where you likely will. They're not as noticeable because they kind of just get engulfed in the sound. So if we're focusing on it, you know, yeah, it could seem bothersome, but in some real world situations, it's not gonna be as bothersome. But the solution to that would be to not have quite as big a spread between some of these jumps, right? Maybe have the, chan the, 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 the drive not as low on our clean and then use our guitar volume to clean it up. So there, there's ways around it. But for now, you know, I just want to mention that because there's been a lot of questions about that. And that's an inherent uh, kind of behavior of the Helix uh, is that those parameters switch in rapid succession, not all at the same time, causing that little sound we hear sometimes depending on the setting. So I'm not gonna worry too much about that. But so what we have here now, snapshot one. Okay, so clean and kind of overdriven. So I now have a platform to feed into my next chain. I'm gonna say I'm gonna add in something that I really like to add in a lot 
is the low and high shelf. And a lot of times I come in here and set both of these to 650 hertz. I boost everything above 650 by 2 dB and I cut everything below by one or two dB. We'll just go with these settings. Now, what does that do to the sound? We can hear when we turn it on and off. I like what it does, I'm gonna leave it on. That's another kind of always on effect for me. So I don't really need to worry too much about whether it adds volume or takes volume away, although it's not really adding much of anything. So I can just leave that, that's always gonna be on. Now after that, <clears throat> I'm going to go into a simple delay. And I'm gonna throw that in there. I'm gonna set it to settings that I kind of enjoy. Uh, where are we at here? Do, 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 do. Okay, let's see and turn the trails on. Now, really and honestly, um, when I put these in, there's very little that ever usually needs to be done to sort of gain stage them. If I turn that off, I don't hear any great jump in volume. These kind of almost take care of themselves. As long as we have a signal going in that's not going to, to do something that we don't want, but that's not gonna happen with a simple delay. I've done tests with this with the null tests and whatnot, and these are very linear processes. Uh, it doesn't matter how much level we hit them with going in. I shouldn't say it doesn't matter. I mean, there's some point where I'm sure clipping comes into the whole chain but it, do, it doesn't affect it in a non-linear fashion. So I can just leave that and be happy and, and go on to my next uh, situation here, which is going to be adding reverb in. And I'll just go and add like a legacy room reverb, um, back it off to the settings I kind of normally have. I'll add a little bit more reverb maybe. So now I'll, I'll turn the delay off and we'll listen to this reverb. Let's turn it off. Now for reverb, for me, a lot of times a reverb like that would just be an always on sort of thing. So again, I wouldn't worry too much about gain staging. And if you notice, as long as I don't come down here and start messing with the level, this should kind of be at unity gain, right? And I believe it kind of is. You know, if you feel like it's, it's adding volume and you need to pull this back half a dB, then do so. A lot of that's gonna be affected by how much mix we put in. If I had 100% mix, all of a sudden it sounds very distant, so I may have to come in here and boost this. You know, maybe not that much, maybe there. But you're gonna hear that direct signal cut out because of the 100% mix and the reverb kind of fade in but they're more kind of at the same level. So it really depends on your settings, but I, I would say at normal settings on a reverb, we're gonna be fine just going at unity gain with these at zero. So, you know, now I have all of these blocks. With them on or off were leveled beautifully. So it almost takes care of itself. And like I said, these, this EQ and this compressor are gonna be always on type of things for me. If you're gonna mean to turn them on and off in the normal use of the preset, then you would wanna make sure they absolutely are at unity gain. But this idea, again, let's turn all these blocks off, get rid of those, and just the amp model. I wanna say a word about this. So let's say we're, you know, the, back to this idea that the instrument level that's coming in, which would be this, must be the same level as that is absurd, except for one time that I would say, and this is not a way I've ever worked. If through the course of using our preset, we were going to toggle the amp and cab block on and off between the clean, dry instrument level signal and that, and use it in that fashion, then by all means, I would want this at unity gain with the dry signal, and then we could boost our output at the end, right? So that would be one case, but if you're not doing it that way, then everything is going to kind of just be fine this way, okay? Uh, we don't have to worry about matching this. In fact, on my clean, I'm utilizing the most I can get out of it. It's an amplifier, it's meant to amplify. 
right? Especially in the real world, right? So, um, so there you have it. Now, what happens if I come in and say that I want to actually put an overdrive pedal in the front of it? Because what's going to happen here is, and if I put a, a Scream 808, there's a level control, there's a gain control. You know, I could crank up the gain control. Let, let's just hear what this does at these sort of stock settings. <laughs> This is meant to hit the front of the amp harder, especially if I was on, say, Snapshot 2 here. Let's try this. Okay, if we turn it off. There might be the slightest jump in volume, but you know, it's a drive pedal. We're trying to hit the front of the amp harder. So the problem here is if we crank the gain up, let's say, to 10, We might get a little boost in volume, but if we come in and start messing with the level control and pulling it back, that's going to now hit the front end of the amp with less signal, which is going to also affect the distortion characteristics. So, you know, I mean, let me just take that out and we'll get it back to default settings here. You know, let's say this was a setting we wanted. I really wouldn't mess with the level on that. It's not causing me a problem. That's gonna be an on and off style effect, absolutely, but it's not really that far away from Unity Gain and it's actually acting in the way that we want it to. So I would look at this and I would say, that's a pretty well set up preset. This is working really well the way I want it to. With something like the compressor and the EQ, they're always on. I'm not so worried about matching gain on those. It's not hard to do. I did it with the compressor just by simply pulling back 2 dB, okay, um, because I'm driving the gain a little harder on this. The reverb really added no extra gain, nor did the delay. The EQ, potentially depending on how heavy handed we go, if I cranked 12 dB into one of these, it's obviously going to raise the volume and we may have to compensate with the level control. But again, if it's an always on type of effect, is there's really no point because it's just gonna be on. It's part of your signal chain. There's no need to compare it on versus off, right? Um, so now, like I said too, if you were gonna somehow, for some crazy reason, use the amp turn on and off to use it in, you know, uh, at, the, at different times within the same preset with your direct guitar signal, then yes, you would want your amp at unity gain with the, the instrument level. Uh, but if you're not planning on toggling that on and off, then I, I really don't see the point in ha giving up so much clean headroom. Now, so here we are uh, on our preset. Everything's working fine. Not necessarily tone I'm to totally thrilled with, but we still have a fair amount of headroom going on here. Now, what I can do is, let's take a look and see. Um, Right now, my peak on my peak meter, I'm looking over on Cubase, is about minus 10, okay? I'm leaving 10 dB of clean headroom. Now, this is fine. If you want to work there, there's nothing wrong with this. this the, the, it's not going to change the sound if you go to the output block and boost it, cut it, keep it the same. I've already proven that with the null tests I did uh, earlier last week. But if I wanted to feed this, let's say, into my power cap and I wanted to get enough signals in my power cap, I'm going to have to raise this up to a higher level to get the appropriate level of signal and the highest signal to noise ratio, the best signal to noise ratio out of my power cap. So I know that even when playing my hardest here, I'm peaking at 10 with my distorted sound. Let's check out the clean sound though. But that has the distortion pedal on, so let's turn that off and try it again. So it's peaking around minus 8.4. So I know I have about almost 8.5 dB of clean gain. So I could come in here and say, you know, I still want to leave myself about 4 dB of headroom. So I'm going to come to the output block. I'm going to raise this by 4 dB. I should be peaking up around 4.4 now on my absolute max. <laughs> 
minus 4.6, very, very close, right? Now I've probably got, and, and my RMS max on that is minus 17. Let's go to our next snapshot. <laughs> My peak max is around minus 3.8, even on something I hit really hard there. My RMS max is at minus 17. I've got a pretty good level here now that I'm very happy with, that I'm not really in danger of clipping in my DAW on my power cab or in most places. Uh, so that's kind of where I would kind of go with this. Now, a lot of folks have asked me, okay, in a preset like this, does going and boosting the output like that change the tone at all? The answer is absolutely 100% no, okay? There is no difference, and I'm gonna prove it to you right now. By duplicating this same preset down here on this path, feeding it a loop out of my DAW, and then trying a null test on it to see, if, you know, and feeding this to different tracks and trying a null test on it, and we will see quickly whether this makes a difference. So I'm gonna get that set up and I'll be right back. Okay, so here I am, as you can see, I've recreated the preset, and just to give you an idea of what's happening, we have the identical preset here, same blocks, distortion's off, amp settings are identical, EQ settings are identical, reverb delay settings are identical, compressor settings are identical, and the end settings are both boosted by 4 dB. Now, the reason I want to do that is I want to kind of set a bit of a baseline here for what we're dealing with. Um, and what you're going to see here is I have two tracks going. I'm feeding, and if I just grab this again to show you what was happening, I'm feeding a looped DI track of my guitar that I recorded off USB 7 out of the Helix right here, and I'm looping this. That's feeding out of USB 3 four into each of these. So each of these paths are getting the same signal, okay? I have the output of one going to USB one, two, and one to USB three, four, which is guitar one and guitar two, all right? So what I can do then is if I play this loop and flip the phase on one of these, it should null so I don't hear anything at all. Here's the loop. Flip the phase and it disappears and nulls down well under the minus 100. There's a little peak up to minus 92 for some reason. I also explained this and there we go now. It's kind of normalized itself. I guess it just takes a second. So that's nulled down below any audible point we could ever hear. And if I crank my studio monitors full, I hear nothing. So those are identical now as they should be. But what happens if I take, let's say, path two and bring this back to zero. So what's happened now is path one, I've boosted by four dB. And let's even go more crazy than that. We said we had almost eight dB of gain. Let's go up six dB. And now they're not the same. So the question is, does it affect the tone if I boost the output gain block at the end? And the answer is no. I've boosted this one 6 dB within the helix. This one is set at zero, meaning I would have to come in and turn this path down 6 dB right here in the helix. And if they are the same, then there's no difference. That's proven scientifically that there's no difference by boosting the output block by however many dB, as long as we're not going into clipping somewhere else or going into a device that is gonna be non-linear that could be affected by more gain, okay? So let's try this. That's boosted by 6 dB, so I gotta turn it down 6 dB here. I'll play the loop again. I still have the phase switch engaged. I'm gonna bring this down 6 dB. And the sound disappears again. So we that is hard and fast proof that there is no difference in the sound and see how it's nulling the same way it nulled before down 117 dB below full scale. So by using that output block at the end, it does nothing to the tone, nothing. And I hear people say, you know, louder is not better. 
Well, this is not about playing louder or playing softer. This is about getting an appropriate signal level into the next part of the chain. If the next part of your chain is your DAW, we need an appropriate signal level there. If the next part of your chain is a power cap, we need the appropriate signal level there. As so long as we're not clipping. The standard thing that I talked about last time is we're trying to maximize signal to noise ratio, which isn't as big a deal with digital audio as it used to be. But we're still, it's a still a good practice. We're trying to maximize signal to noise ratio while keeping it out of clipping and any artifacts that we don't want, if that makes sense. So that's a simple look at how I go about leveling my presets. A lot of it, you don't have to worry about. You do have to worry about how much level, again, to reiterate from what I talked about last week, you do have to worry about how much level you are sending into blocks that are designed to be non-linear. What does that mean? Watch my previous videos, but as a quick explanation, non-linear means the behavior of that block or that effect is going to change depending on how much input level it's hit with. It'll add possibly nice distortion, possibly not so nice distortion. Something like the simple delay and the reverbs I proved last week, they are linear. We can hit them with more or less gain and they don't react differently, okay? Something like the transistor tape does. It's going to be up to us to decide how much signal we want to send into those. But for the most part, in my experience, adding delays, reverbs, for the most part, again, there's going to be exceptions. It's as simple as throwing it on there and they're kind of almost automatically at unity gain. But again, depending on the settings. Compressors, we have to be a little more careful of. That's why I put the compressor in first. I saw how much gain reduction I had going into it with the sort of maxed out settings I had. So maxing out that channel volume on the clean sound because that's going to have the most, you know, the biggest transient spikes at the beginning. And that's where we're going to get our peaks from and then dial down from there. And the compressor is going to work the same way if we're hitting it with kind of the same, roughly the same amount of signal. But again, we have to use our ears in the end, right? The other thing is any blocks we're going to keep on all the time it's not so important that they're at unity gain when, to when they're off. So there's all sorts of possibilities. But I hope that helped you to kind of clear up and put everything together from the videos I did last week. I think these videos are very important because there was so much misinformation uh, floating around out there and people saying, oh, it's about the tone, don't go above this level. And it's, it's not about the tone unless we're feeding something after it that's non-linear and that's going to add some distortion characteristic that we don't want. Sometimes maybe it is what we want, right? So, so I hope it was clear on that and I hope that was useful. And I really hope that you could all share this video uh, with anybody who you think would need to see it because I think it's a very important topic. The two gain staging videos I did, the unity gain video I did, and this one to kind of put it all together are a really important series uh, that's gonna help, I, I hope help a lot of folks to be able to dial their presets in, in, a, in a knowledgeable way so that they're well-educated about what is actually going on rather than just myths that people are throwing around on the internet. So thank you guys so much. Please like the video, share it with anybody that you think will get some use out of it. Please subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I'll be back soon with some more content, some really exciting news this week coming up. So I'll uh, keep you posted. I'm, I'm really, uh, really excited. I've been holding it in for a while. So um, thanks again, guys. I'll be back soon. Ciao for now.